Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Canyas, and today I have with me John Sabis, the CEO at Foxo Technologies. John, how's it going today? Great, Tony. Glad to be here. Awesome. Th thank you so much for, for joining me. And, and if I'm not mistaken, you're in Austin, right? Austin, baby. Keep it weird. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and not only not, not only the, the whole keep Austin weird thing, but also a huge technology hub. So so definitely yeah. a, good, a good fit for 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 what you guys do. Uh, so I was telling you just before we started recording that uh, we've done three hundred plus episodes. I've probably done one hundred and eighty of those or so myself. But I'm definitely uh, very excited for this one uh, because I've I've always been very curious on how the life insurance side. Uh, will handle uh, life extension if if if, uh, if we if, especially if we do hit an exponential curve when, when it comes to, to to biotech. So I am very curious about Foxo and, and what do you what do, what do you guys do? Uh, so we we always give give the guests uh, the the chance to to give kind of the elevator pitch. So 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 what what is Foxo? Sure, Tony. Um, the, the, yeah. Well, at a high level, yeah, Foxo is, is, a, is a bet, it's a play. Will molecular biotechnology fundamentally change the life insurance industry, and if so, how, right? And Foxo is the one doing it. We're the primary integrator, developer, we're, we're, we're making it happen. You know, the industry has been kind of standing by the, by the buy side, like, all right, well, it's all going on, but we're like, yeah, we're doing it. It's gonna happen. So yeah, we're, we're, we're the guys. Okay. Uh, so, so, that, so let's get into it. Let's talk about it. What what the so, hell is going on? Yeah, insurance in general. Yeah, even the PNC side, where which is the side that I, that I that I live in most most of the time, yeah. uh, is slow, right? Very 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 slow. And and life is is uh, slower. Slower. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the reputation <laughs> they have is it's even slower. And 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 it makes sense, right? The the the, the risks on the on the life insurance side. Are much longer tail, uh, kind of, kind of, kind of by by definition, right? Uh, and and I have had some some guests on on the show talk about the traditional purchase uh, of life insurance and, and how painful it is and how it takes weeks to underwrite and you have to get uh, get a medical exam and and it's it's just a very very painful process. So 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 how does Foxo? How, how are you guys doing it? How, how, how are you fundamentally changing the life insurance industry? Yeah, uh, well, lots, lots to talk about. Fundamentally, how we're changing it is we're going to make longevity science fundamental to the product itself, right? Like that in and of itself, we're fundamentally going to take longevity science broadly defined and make that fundamental to life insurance. I mean, life insurance should be designed to keep you alive. I mean, it's in the life insurance company's best interest that I live longer. Um, and so like, why not? And, and you make this kind of observation to say, well, when this step change in molecular biotechnology happens, and I think there you're talking about life extension, but, but we've got step change occurring in molecular biotechnology, okay? There is something that has happened in our lifetime that is so, um, uh, so important that it's hard to recognize what it is. I, I, I think we, 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 one evidence of it is uh, uh, the COVID vaccine. So the COVID vaccine was, was made in a matter of months, not years. And why? Because the cost of genomic sequencing technology, coupled with the advent of machine learning and AI tools, is now such that it is at a level that scientists, researchers, and everyone can, can, can access the molecular bits of data to interpret them and then build things that help us uh, live healthier longer. And that's happened and it's not going away. And, and so we are harnessing pieces of that and we're going to bring it into the life insurance industry, broadly speaking. Okay, so, so, so let, let, me, let me pause you there. Okay, so, so, so my understanding of the, of the life side, it's, it's largely built on, on, on just actuarial models of, of how long you're likely to, to live and a little bit of, of, of looking at, at, at your uh, basic health stats, right? But, but not, not, nothing be, beyond that. And, and uh, 
I, I do think for, for the listeners, it is, it is important to, to uh, and again, I'm not an expert on this. I, what I am is a big reader. And, and a few years ago, I, I read a book called The $10,000 uh, Gene, no, The Thousand Dollar Genome. And, and I hadn't thought of it for years, but you just reminded me of it. Uh, but basically, what I did learn from that book is, is uh, it, it cost a billion dollars to, 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 uh, to, to do the first human, human, human genome. Uh, and, and by the, three, three billion, three billion. Okay. Perfect. Three billion. And, and by the time that book was written, maybe eight years ago, we were at the point where, 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 where we could, we could do it for like $10,000. Uh, so, and it, it basically the whole book is about, we expect that to continue declining to the point where we can do thousand dollar genomes and, uh, that can, that's going to have radical effects on, on, on healthcare. Right. Uh, so, so I don't know, don't know where we are now. Yeah, well, we're there. We're there. It's happened. Um, so we have mass sequencing technologies that cost. They they often compare to Moore's law, the exponential increase in computing power, which is leading to AI and machine learning. That 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 exponential growth is often compared to the decreasing cost in in genomic sequencing technology. And the cost has been decreasing faster than Moore's law has been increasing. Okay. And quite astounding. I mean, it is it is uh, unbelievable. And so when you think about what what you know the data, right? So the troves of data that are not only in your genetics but in your epigenetics, those troves of data are are now available at really pretty low cost basis. And, and so then the challenge becomes is how do I interpret all of this data? How do I make sense of it? And so until you have both of those two things working together, you can't really do the things that we're talking about doing. And so that's really what's been going on and, and it's in our lifetime. And that's what's leading to these, a lot of movement now in what's called longevity science, which is now working to extend human longevity. We're seeing all sorts of things going on, whether it's Altos Labs, the Bezos funded initiative. There's recently another company by Peter Diamatis and Tony Robbins. Um, there's been a lot of things going on right now around longevity. The, the drumbeat of healthy longevity is the new, new thing. And why is that? I mean, it's no surprise all these aging boomers, right, are like, Oh my gosh, the only thing I really, really want at this point is to live healthy and long. I mean, come on. After you get the get to a place of when you can afford a life insurance policy, when it means something to you, like what do you really want? I want to live healthy and, and as long as possible. And so this is where we come back to, well, what's the purpose of life insurance? Sure, life insurance provides for great uh, estate tax planning. It provides for a way to, to invest you know, on a tax deferred basis. It does a lot of really incredibly important things. And those things haven't changed pretty much hmm, since I've been alive anyways. But what else can it do and should it do? Well, it should also help the insured, the customer live longer. If that's a, a benefit that I get within, within my life insurance policy, hey, I'm interested. You know, like I'm way more interested than life insurance uh, now. And, and my point is, is we can build these into the life insurance product itself, as well as, and you talked about a specific area or a pain point, no pun intended, which is the medical underwriting of life insurance, which is interesting like how I got into the business in many ways, which was addressing this underwriting uh, problem, which is how do we uh, alleviate this key pain point in, in the life insurance sales or purchasing process. And, and there's an area of molecular biotechnology, it's called epigenetic science, and that's what FOXO uh, specializes in. We are commercializing an area of what's called epigenetic science to eliminate the necessity for blood and urine and medical underwriting as we know it today. And we wanna replace that with a saliva-based sample to look for the same things, uh, impairment risks that medical underwriting looks for today. And, and we believe we can convert, we believe that the, the science supports it. We are in a process of commercializing this. And, and once commercialized, we think this is a massive step change improvement for the life insurance industry. Not so much for the carriers. We're not suggesting we're gonna rewrite the book on how to risk classify individuals. What we're suggesting is there's a better, easier, 
more non-invasive way for the customer to get in those risk classification buckets. And it doesn't involve a needle. It doesn't involve the paramedical. It doesn't involve six to eight weeks during which an agent loses 30 to 40% of their business. Um, and, it's, and it's also a way in which we can, again, build more content into the life insurance product itself to create what we um, trademarked life insurance designed to keep you alive, which we think is super, super exciting. Okay, so, so, so the first piece, the, we go for, for, from a medical test to just saliva sample. Well, it's still a medical test. So, so, let's, okay. so, so what, you know, what we're proposing is instead of using the same protocol that was developed in 19, I don't know exactly, 72 to look for cotinine, a urine cotinine metabolite, we can look at what's called patterns of methylation at a molecular level to determine uh, tobacco use. So again, here we're looking for cotinine in saliva or urine uh, to indicate a smoker. Here we're looking at patterns of what we call DNA methylation, which are chemical tags that are impacting gene expression that indicate you're a tobacco user. So we're looking for the very same thing. Instead of using that microscope that you used in seventh grade, uh, that hasn't changed much since then. We're using an electron microscope. We're looking at a different part of the biology to tell us the same thing that we're looking for with this microscope. And that's our point. We're looking at the smaller bits of data to identify the same risks of impairment or, and or mortality. And that's our, that's our genius. That's what we're doing. And, and that technology, what, coming back to uh, where we started, is, is able to be commercialized now because we have this machine learning AI that can look through what we call patterns of DNA methylation that we can get relatively inexpensively from saliva and can tell us, do they smoke? Do they drink? Are you using drugs? Are you cardiovascular healthy? Are you metabolically healthy? All the same things that, again, traditional medical underwriting is seeking to identify through this six to eight week pain point of the underwriting protocol. Okay. Um, so a life in insurance policy that could help me live longer. So the, the only thing that, that I can imagine it is by, by, by pushing me to change behavior, uh, right? By pushing me to exercise more, kind of, kind of thing, eat better. How about nudging you? We're not going to push you to do anything. Yeah, no, nudging is a, is, a, is a better way to put it, yes. Yeah. How about if you understand, if you have a better understanding, like a, let's go maybe go back to an area of science and distinguish genetics from epigenetics. So that's a, that's a big, mm -hmm. uh, big topic that we could unbundle for folks. Um, so genetics... Or what you're born with. You get half from mom and half from dad. That's it. Your genetic uh, uh, composition doesn't change throughout your life. In fact, the very same pattern of DNA that's in that initial cell called the zygote is in every one of the 30 trillion cells in your body today, that exact same copy. So epigenetics, that's your genetics. That's sort of your sheet music. Epigenetics is the expression of that sheet music. And obviously, the expression of your genes are really impacted by your behaviors, by your lifestyle. Are you exercising? Are you smoking tobacco? Are you doing all of these things? And so that's gene expression. And it's really important that once we really learn that how much control we have over our health and wellness, our own destiny, so to speak, that you can't unlearn that. You know, and, and so being nudged, you once you kind of think about it, you're like, ah, I'm taking another drink or I'm taking a puff. You know how, how at a molecular level that is changing your health um, uh, and mortality profile. And so that's kind of where we're at, which is, you know, the first um, step is to awareness. How, how do the decisions I make impact me today and my future health and wellness outcome? And that's, so that's the science of epigenetics, or again, what we call the patterns of methylation, methyl groups will, if you smoke tobacco, you actually have methyl groups that are attaching to the DNA and are causing the DNA to express differently. It's like, it's like the sheet music getting played incorrectly and you, you play it incorrect, uh, make enough mistakes, suddenly it doesn't sound much like that sheet music that Beethoven had, had written. 
And so your goal, if you want to express yourself at, at, at maximum health and wellness, is, is to make those decisions, play that music optimally. And that's where we're going to, where molecular health and wellness can help you play that music optimally to be as healthy and ultimately uh, live as long as, as possible. And that's where, again, the scientists are working to help us even live longer. We're talking about live 100, live 125. Why is there any limit? There's some great books, Lifespan by David Sinclair. You know, uh, get that one, listen to that. It's a really uh, great um, introduction to the science of longevity and epigenetics if you're interested. Excellent. Um, how long has, has FOXO been around? Yeah, FOXO um, has is, is been around a while. Let's see, I should know my, my founding date uh, pretty clearly. You know, FOXO was born out of a prior company I was working um, at, and um, I became frustrated with how we predict mortality. I, I like to say I was born in the, um, I, I come from the, the, the back office, the mailroom of the life insurance industry, the pile. The, the, the mailroom of unwanted life insurance where policies are being lapsed and sold and then a secondary market evolves where uh, older individuals could sell their policies in the secondary market. And the key to being able to, to provide consumers that additional value was how do you predict their mortality? And, and so that was a very key and fundamental to that, to that uh, business. And so I began this search or this quest of like, there's gotta be a better way. I mean, I can talk to you, we can have this interview over our computer, it's gonna get posted up. Hopefully we'll get a million listeners because we're talking about such interesting stuff uh, here today. But um, there, there had to be a better way to do mortality prediction, which led me to um, the work out at UCLA uh, and Dr. Steve Horvath, who discovered the epigenetic clock. And so this epigenetic clock is a measure of how we uh, age biologically, which differs from say our chronological age. And so when you apply for life insurance, right? What's the first question? Tony, how old are you? Yeah, chronological. Yeah, how old are you? 50, chronologically I'm 50, great. Now, if I had another measure that said you're biologically 40 or biologically 60 as measured by this clock, I went up to Horvath's office. I said, let me understand this right. We're both 50, we're both in good health but he's got a biological age of 60 and I'm 40. Who's gonna live longer, Steve? Said so no question about it. That guy, the 40 year old, he's gonna, he's, his odds of living longer, as you know, life, it's a, it's, a probability, it's a probabilistic analysis, but that 40 year old biologically, he's got a much better chance of living longer. And I said, oh, have you heard of this thing called the life insurance industry? It's a small industry that uh, looks at building financial products around predicting how long people live. He goes, no, that's a great idea. Oh, great. What I didn't know in that very same question was that this science of epigenetics and the epigenetic clock also could indicate not only how old you are biologically, but do you use tobacco or not? Because not surprisingly, Horvath had looked at that. And if you're using tobacco, don't be surprised, but you're probably biologically aging faster than your chronological age, newsflash. And so that, so, so we've been at this around five, five or six years to get back to your question. Mm -hmm. uh, and th we've done our kind of fundamental research to go, oh my gosh, this all works. And so we've been actively working now to commercialize all of this. Okay, so, 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 so the research is, is well in its way. Um, <laughs> have you found, uh, a life insurance partner or or a few partners to the, the actually adopt uh, all of the research um not yet we so, are where so that, that's the current yep. stage basically yep so so we've been talking to carriers for quite a while um we're in we're in various uh conversations with them uh right now for for research and for partnerships so uh, we're really looking to build a partnership with a carrier uh, on an MGA basis, uh, but we also built a, a purchased our own life insurance company because we became we became frustrated about the speed at which we're making progress because we think this is so obvious, and so we bought our own carrier. Um, it's called the Foxo Life Insurance Company. Uh, we've filed for our own products. We've been building up our own digital insurance uh, company from scratch. It's brilliant. 
And we've been building our uh, own consumer engagement experience around embedding or bundling molecular health and wellness with life insurance. And so we're getting ready to stand all of that up. We're, uh, we've announced a transaction to go public. Uh, we're working on that. We're raising lots of capital. And we also are still looking, though, to partner with the industry, because ultimately that's our goal, which is to commercialize this technology to provide it to the not only domestic life insurance industry, but the global life insurance industry. Um, and so we're, we're working towards that aim. That's a, that's a, that's a big goal. Um, I call it my Everest. Um, and so we're just, you know, how do you swallow the whale? One bite at a time. But uh, we're, we're getting ready to, to launch a product. That, that, that's fantastic. So, so um, your own life insurance company, are, are you expecting to, to be live in a couple of states by end of the year, end of next year kind of thing? Yes, we are. Yep. And, and we're talking to various carriers about an MGA partnership as well. And that's so, so if there's any executives out there listening uh, in, in insurance carriers, we're looking for that MGA partnership. We don't necessarily want to build out a 50 state primary carrier, but, but this allows us to build out all of our operational components to then service a primary carrier and, and work with distribution. So I know there are agents and, and distributors out there. We're highly interested in partnering with independent agents. Um, I like to say FOXO is built by agents for agents. So I'm not a PhD. Um, I kind of just stumbled into this, but I'm really um, uh, excited about building a new, exciting life insurance product and chassis for agents. And, and we know we're eliminating the key pain point in, in that sales process, which is this underwriting protocol. Six to eight weeks, I lose 30% of my business. And by the way, no one's brought me anything interesting to go talk to my client about since some writer on some different product and blah, 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 blah. I mean, like for me, those days are over. What do I want to be talking about with my clients? I want to be talking about their healthy longevity. And I want to be talking about a life insurance policy that is aligned and committed to their health, uh, their health and wellness through molecular biotechnology. And that's the FOXO vision. That's making longevity science fundamental to life insurance. It creates an entire new platform for agents to go talk to clients about, sell more life insurance, because this is different than anything they all, they've had. C uh, retain new agents to come in, because this is all again about health and wellness and lifestyle. And, and frankly, I think we can make life insurance really interesting to go sell and talk about, where I just feel like it hasn't done much for agents in the last few years, as far as I can tell. Okay. Um, what, a, what, what are the characteristics of, of the perfect agent partner, the, the, the broker partner that, that, that you'd love to, to find? Yeah, great question. Um, I, I think the characteristics are, are, are uh, agents, uh, in, an independent agent group who does a lot of life, does a lot of permanent product, who, when I say saliva-based underwriting, go, it's, go, it's too good to be true. Could, could, it's, 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 it's impossible because they feel this pain point. I've been in front of enough agents, and so I didn't kind of make this up. I, I was, I've been, I presented in front of them where they go, oh my God, it's just too good to be true. I'm here to tell you it's not too good to be true. It's here and now. We need your partnership to make this happen because you know most of the conversations we've been having with the carriers have been in the actuary and actuarial and underwriting uh, units because they want to know about the science and how does it work. Okay, great. We get that. But that's only half of the equation. The other half is the guys that have to sell it. And I, I see the underwriting and actuarial team are, and I don't mean any disrespect, but they're the business prevention units. They're the guys who prevent the carriers from, you know, making a mistake. And they're, you know, they're, they, they're the, they're the guards. Right. But there's this other side of the company that that has to sell and is interested in selling product. And so those agents who I, when I say saliva based underwriting, uh, which, by the way, we should just pause for a minute. What it is, is it's saliva in addition to accelerated underwriting. So we call this enhanced accelerated underwriting. So in, in life insurance and Tony, I know you're kind of PNC bias, but but in life, there's been lots and lots of movement with accelerated underwriting agents, right? So accelerated underwriting data only is really being widely used by a lot of the carriers for life insurance policies, 
particularly term product, and up to say a million dollar in face, although some carriers will go a little bit larger. So this is accelerated underwriting, accelerated underwriting the growth of it, accelerated, no pun intended, during COVID, because no one was getting paramedical <laughs> underwriting during COVID. So the adoption of, of, of accelerated underwriting really has increased. So what we're saying is, okay, take accelerated underwriting, take a saliva sample, and guess what? We think we can get the underwriting and actuarial folks comfortable that we are at close to, if maybe even better, the medical underwriting protocol they will otherwise have you. And this is the solve. This is this is the underwriting solution we're proposing to the industry. And you know, we're we're close. Um, and so going back to your question, an agent group who goes, oh my gosh, that would be so incredible if I had a way in which to streamline the underwriting and go uh, to, to with my clients, it would be remarkable. The other group will be what we call agents of the future that want to go talk about health and wellness, that want this sort of, hey, I want to have a new conversation in the country club on the golf game with at dinner at my at my social gathering. I want to talk, I want to be an expert in health and wellness. I want to be a champion of the longevity of my of my clients. And I'm going to do that as part of my product sales and presentation. So if you're out there and listening to this, go, wow, that would be cool. Get in touch with Tony or call us at Foxo and, you know, we're, 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 we're active. We're, we're talking to folks. Uh, that, that is quite the mission uh, and definitely a very different kind of agent. But what I can definitely see, uh, I, 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 can, I can definitely imagine the type of agent out there that, 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 uh, that, that would thrive doing this. Uh, so, so very, very, very interesting stuff. Uh, definitely look forward to, to, to see you guys uh, succeeding in, in making this available uh, because it, the, the, the way we do life is, is definitely old fashioned and, and the way it's sold, the way it's underwritten, it's, it's a slow, painful process. Uh, uh, and nobody wants to talk about life insurance because, because basically you're talking about your own death. Uh, so much better if what we're talking about is helping you live longer and enjoy, enjoy your time longer. Uh, yeah. so, so, John, uh, thank you for, for, for joining me today. It's, it's been very, very interesting. Uh, I feel like, like I got in front of you guys early enough. So, so definitely looking forward to, to, to see you guys grow. Yeah, stay in touch. Happy to come back anytime, Tony. Appreciate the support. Thank you.